For months, U.S. journalists and attorneys felt they were being sometimes targeted by their own government. And now leaked documents from a government source show their fears were warranted. So these documents show federal agencies have been collecting and compiling detailed information on American citizens. NBC7 investigates reporter Mari Payton is here with more on this exclusive investigation. Mari. Mark Catherine, screenshots of the internal database were provided to NBC7 by a Homeland Security source. Individuals on the list include journalists, an attorney, and dozens of others labeled by the U.S. government as an organizer or instigator. They all have a connection to the migrant caravan at the San Diego-Mexico border. Customs and Border Protection did not deny the database exists and defended its use. In December 2018, a migrant caravan from Honduras was heading toward the Tijuana-San Diego border. While those migrants made their way toward the San Ysidro port of entry, so did immigration advocates, attorneys, and journalists, including freelance photojournalist Ariana Dressler. I shoot white a lot, but I do shoot a lot of portraits. Dressler estimated she had crossed the border from San Ysidro dozens of times for work. I was very transparent about what I was doing. Um, if I was asked by an agent what was I doing, I would tell them you know, I was photographing at the shelters. But in the month that followed her coverage of the caravan, Dressler said she and other journalists became targets of intense inspections. Some of them told NBC7 Investigates they suspected the U.S. government was monitoring them closely. These documents given to NBC7 show their concerns are warranted. NBC7 Investigates discovered Dressler listed in a secret database. The source tells us it is only accessible by agents from Customs and Border Protection, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the U.S. Border Patrol, and the FBI. I don't understand why. The title page labels the individuals listed as, quote, suspected organizers, coordinators, instigators, and media tied to the migrant caravan. Those individuals include 10 journalists, a U.S. attorney, and 47 people from the U.S. and other countries. The documents show their photo, often from their passport, but in some cases from their social media accounts. The profile also includes information like date of birth and their role in connection to the caravan. Our source says each person's file also included a dossier with even more details. NBC7 Investigates was only able to view one such dossier that included a description of the person's car, mother's name, work and travel history. The documents also show officials place alerts on most of the individual's passports. Some have an X over their photo, indicating whether they were arrested, interviewed, or had their visa or sentry pass revoked. Those alerts kept at least three photojournalists and an attorney from entering Mexico to work. A Customs and Border Protection spokesperson did not answer NBC7's questions about the database, but by email the spokesperson said in part, quote, Criminal events such as the breach of the border wall in San Diego are routinely monitored and investigated by authorities. It is protocol following these incidents to collect evidence that might be needed for future legal actions. Japanese in Los Angeles than in any other area. At nearby San Pedro, houses and hotels occupied almost exclusively by Japanese were within a stone's throw of a naval air base, shipyards, oil wells. Japanese fishermen had every opportunity to watch the movement of our ships. Japanese farmers were living close to vital aircraft plants. So as a first step, all Japanese were required to move from critical areas such as these. But of course, this limited evacuation was a solution to only part of the problem. Immediately, the army began mapping evacuation areas and for a time encouraged the Japanese to leave voluntarily. The trouble for the voluntary evacuees soon threatened in their new locations. So the program was quickly put on a planned and protected basis. Thereafter, the American citizen Japanese and Japanese aliens made plans in accordance with orders. Notices were posted. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. 
They gathered in their own churches and schools, and the Japanese themselves cheerfully handled the enormous paperwork involved in the migration. Men today launched their Huduma National Integrated Identity Management System NIMS pilot program at the AC Kenyan Dara Faith Academy. Now the launch was also conducted in 15 other counties by principal sectaries. This is a pilot project. We have teamed up with a company called Pitstop and our partners and their partners from the United States of America who developed this system. And they have uh, brought it to us and decided that uh, we use soy as a pilot in order that we may register all our farmers digitally and have all the biometric. Uh, the registration is a biometric and they will explain to you uh, later. The benefits of this is that once we have done this, we will know exactly how many farmers we have in soy constituency. We will know exactly what crop they are cultivating and how many acres we have under maize, under wheat, under vegetables and any other uh, uh, crop that they may, may, be, may be planting. United States Visitor and Immigrant Status Indicator Technology, commonly referred to as U.S. Visit, is a U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP, management system. The system involves the collection and analysis of biometric data, such as fingerprints, which are checked against a database to track individuals deemed by the United States to be terrorists, criminals, and illegal immigrants. Cartoon news comments. A billion Indians have their eye and finger biometrics collected by the rich, beginning the surveillance state of the world. New AI recognition tech can match your face to your body. A Japanese company has developed a system that would be able to identify a person even if they aren't directly facing the camera. NEC has announced a recognition technology that would be able to analyze a person's entire body rather than just their face. According to New Atlas, developers use deep learning techniques and body shape and clothing analysis to create a system called Person Re-Identification Technology. NEC says the system had accuracy rates of up to 90% during testing. According to the company's press release, the AI-powered recognition technology would be able to identify people even if their back or their side is facing the camera.